Well, a very good day to you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Candy Talk here on Naman Manyara's YouTube channel. Remember, this is Kenya's most comprehensive political and public governance analysis show. My name is Evans so Kenya. It's such a pleasure to always have you on board. Well, I'm joined here by Wakili Willis. So, you know, how are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. I want us to look at how things are happening in this country and make our viewers understand some of these things. Well, of course, uh, the president made some assertions regarding the austerity measures that should be taken here. In. He says that uh, uh, every ministry in this country should now stop being extravagant. That is it. The, the, these are the assertions that he made while. Uh, attending some sort of a rally or rather in his visit to the uh, Ma region of course they are in making some of these assertions and some of the Kenyans did not actually uh, get uh, write some of these statements that uh, uh, the president made but this of course comes at the backdrop of the return of the uh, positions of the chief administrative secretaries now I want us to begin from here how still we think the government is and how true and sincere is the president while he's talking about austerity measures here? Of course, he's not sincere. Mm -hmm. If you look at how the Kenya Kwanza administration has conducted itself mm -hmm. the last one year, they're not living a frugal life. Mm -hmm. They're very ostentatious in their spending. Mm -hmm. And even when you see them insisting on coming up with these positions of chief administrative secretaries mm -hmm. without respecting our constitutional structure of governance, mm -hmm. they're just creating jobs for their political accolades, mm -hmm. and there is no value add that these CAs are going to add in the lives of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Their positions are illegal. If you are going to say that you want ministries, uh, MDAs, to live a frugal life, people mm -hmm. to be a bit austere mm -hmm. in their spending, mm -hmm. you should lead by example. State House Innovations, was it necessary? Mm -hmm. Buying a fleet of cars worth more than one billion for the three main players in Kenya Kwanza. Mm -hmm. Was it necessary? Mm -hmm. When you cannot afford to pay intern doctors four billion Kenya shillings for all year, mm -hmm. you are spending more than 10 billion shillings on hospitality mm -hmm. in status. Is it necessary? Mm -hmm. So they are not austere. They are actually very ostentatious in their spending. Mm -hmm. And now they are also insisting on reintroducing cars. And if you look at the list of the people they nominated, mm -hmm. the rank and file of failed political players in Kenya Kwanza mm -hmm. are the ones who are being appointed. They are just giving them... Uh, cushion uh, using public resources so as to sustain their being in office is not necessary mm -hmm. so they are not they don't walk the talk what they say and what they do are totally different mm -hmm. they are not in sync and that must be rejected we must call it all out that this is bullshit these people whatever they are telling us and what they are doing are totally different mm -hmm. and it is time that we call them out we do not need the CS officer, officers mm -hmm. in office. If Kenyans needed those positions, nothing stops Kenya Kwanza mm -hmm. from proposing a constitutional amendment bill, taking it to a referendum mm -hmm. to the people of Kenya to vote if they want to change the structure and the functions mm -hmm. of government. Because as it were, mm -hmm. the people of Kenya already said we need a government, national government, mm -hmm. that has a president, a deputy, between 14 to 24, 23 ministers. Mm -hmm. We have a principal secretary mm -hmm. for each department. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. Now, if you want to create again another animal that apparently exists between mm -hmm. the CS and, I mean, the PS and the CS, mm -hmm. take it back to the people who create the constitution. Give them a chance at a referendum to vote for it. Those offices are unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. They were illegal during the Jubilee days. They are still illegal even today. Mm -hmm. And those who are holding those offices, those who are insisting on appointing people to those offices, mm -hmm. are committing an act of arrogation of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And it must be pointed out. Mm -hmm. Nothing stops them if they are truly convicted mm -hmm. that we need those offices. Nothing stops them from taking the courage of their conviction to the people in a referendum. Mm -hmm. Let the people decide. And Kenyans will have their say mm -hmm. if they want to alter that structure and transfer some of the functions of the CS or the PS to the CAS. Mm -hmm. Because that is what you are doing. When Kenyans passed this constitution in 2010, mm -hmm. they had in office assistant ministers. They had in office cabinet ministers. Mm -hmm. They had in office permanent secretaries. 
they decided to remove the assistant minister, which is the ostensible role mm -hmm. of the C of the CS. They decided to remove it, okay. and they voted for only the two tires. So, if anybody desires to introduce the assistant minister through the back door, nothing stops it from going back to the people. Give them a constitutional amendment bill. Mm -hmm. Let them vote. If Kenyans vote for it, it will be well in order. Mm -hmm. But this fascination with trying to do things in a way that undermines our constitutional order, this political skill dajari, mm -hmm. they are trying to hoodwink us. Mm -hmm. They are trying to govern us through the back door mm -hmm. without acceding to the instruments mm -hmm. through which we delegated our sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So that instrument is the Constitution of Kenya 2010. Mm -hmm. It tells you how your government structure should be. Okay. It tells you the roles and functions of a cabinet, mm -hmm. the roles and functions of a PS. Now you are trying to create a CS. Mm -hmm. Take it back to the people in a referendum. Mm -hmm. Let them create for you that tire. And if they agree, you love your day. Mm -hmm. But this conmanship of trying to create officers illegally to reward your political failures, mm -hmm. it must be called out because that's a cost on the taxpayer mm -hmm. to maintain those offices, the individual, the vehicles, the fuel guzzlers, mm -hmm. the personal aids, personal assistance, security, the administrative cost of running that office mm -hmm. will be bought by the people of Kenya. Okay. And there's no value they're adding mm -hmm. to our governance. Senator George Muragara, uh, Muragara, that is, uh, of course, a uh, seasoned uh, legal intellectual here, he chairs the JLAC, that is the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee at the Senate, therefore, is actually the one under whose chairmanship uh, this. Uh, uh, bill was actually worked and worked 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 in there, and 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 I wonder he says here that nothing stops actually the president from uh, uh, appointing people to whom he would actually need for the betterment of the people because of this thing here that there's just too much work to be done. A lot has to be done to change this country, and the workload is just too much. Therefore. These people are necessary. That is why he's saying that uh, they have to work on it and recommend this particular uh, list because they're saying that these people are necessary. We need the cast. But here you are saying that they're not necessary. Why? What's the difference? What do you think is actually not happening here? But that's Tugege talk. Uh -huh. He's talking like a Tugege. Why are you wasting time discussing a Tugege? Mm -hmm. But if he thinks they're necessary mm -hmm. as the chairman of the departmental committee, mm -hmm. I've just said, take it to the people in a referendum. Okay. Yeah. Where did the people say we've given up our sovereignty mm -hmm. between the Tugege and uh, William Root? Mm -hmm. We've not given it up. We donated part of it. If they think that as a committee, the structure ought to be changed, mm -hmm. nothing stops him from proposing an amendment bill mm -hmm. as a legal mind and take it to the people in a referendum. We have no problem with them doing it, I mean, proposing, saying that there's too much work to be done. Mm -hmm. That is his view. But we have a problem with mm -hmm. trying to sneak in the position through the back door. Mm -hmm. Take it to the people in a referendum. Because that changes the functions of the executive. Mm -hmm. Send the people to a referendum. Let the people decide. Mm -hmm. If the people say we want CAS to be in office, fine. Because mm -hmm. the people will have known we are creating another load within government and will bear the burden of maintaining that office mm. once in place. The people will have decided. Mm. No problem with that. But what we are calling out is trying to do it through the back door, ignoring the voice of the people, mm. not calling the people to a referendum to say if they desire. Mm. And that's why I say, if you are confident that that office, there's a rationale for it, mm -hmm. Why are they not sending it to the people in a referendum? So the president decided to introduce these, of course, through the JLAC and all that, of course, through the parliament and uh, Senate. Those are just but the legal provisions that they are in. But then it was introduced through the Public Service Commission. How we are saying is that? Uh -huh. the structure of the executive is in the constitution. Mm -hmm. To amend that structure of the executive, mm -hmm. national executive, mm -hmm. under our articles, chapter six, uh, six schedule of our constitution, mm -hmm. you must do a referendum. Mm -hmm. Chapter 18, sorry. Mm -hmm. You must do a referendum. Take it to a referendum. Mm -hmm. Let the people decide. But this also raises a question on the limit of the, the mandate and functions of the uh, Public Service Commission. Of course. Uh -huh. 
That's the point. You see, when Kenyans came up with certain things that must be done through a referendum, mm -hmm. Kenyans decided to ring fence their constitution. Okay. They knew that national executives will misbehave and parliament, like they're misbehaving now. Mm -hmm. That's why they were ring fenced. And they, in a way, said, if you want to change these fence, mm -hmm. you must come back to us to get a proper mandate. Okay. So in that particular question, they must go back to the people of Kenya in a referendum. Mm -hmm to push the boundary of that fence. Mm -hmm. What JLAC and the PSC are trying to do mm -hmm. is to move the fence illegally without involving the people. Okay. If they think there's a rational, there's a genuine reason to move this fence, mm -hmm. go back to the people, your employers, mm -hmm. the owners of the constitution, and tell them, we want this fence to be moved from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. The people will vote. And say, we are changing the structure of the executive to have a CS, a CS, a BS. Mm -hmm. These will be the functions. Mm -hmm. The people saying it in a referendum. If the people say yes, you can go ahead. Mm -hmm. No one will stop you at that point because we'll have gotten the popular mandate mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. But they are all lawyers. PSC has legal minds. Mm -hmm. The chairman is a lawyer. They all know these provisions. I'm not the concern of the Constitution of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Any Kenyan can access it. Mm -hmm. They all know chapter 18, mm -hmm. what can be amended through parliament. They all know the structure of government mm -hmm. as set out in the constitution. This, Why are they ignoring it? This, and that is actually what is bothering me. This question of we have legal minds mm -hmm. there in who actually know what the constitution stipulates, but then they fail to do that. What because, do you think is happening? You see, this is what I call togetherism. Mm -hmm. Because you actually know. There is even, even need an interpretation. It is very clear. The national government shall exist, consist of the following. Mm -hmm. It is set out in the constitution. There is no way in the constitution mentions CS. It doesn't. Chapter 18 tells you if you want to change anything that affects the structure of national government, mm -hmm. take it to the people in a referendum. Mm -hmm. It tells you. Then now you decide to propose things using legislation mm -hmm. that undermines that constitution. And you are a lawyer. What kind of uh, legal halotry is this? Mm -hmm. That you want to now conveniently ignore mm -hmm. or misread the constitution. The truth of the matter is they know it deep down in their minds. Okay. When they go to sleep at night, they know it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying anything that I have come up with an innovative way of interpreting the constitution. No, mm -hmm. there is no interpretation I have done. I have just read the constitution as it is. Mm -hmm. There is no place of CAS in our current legal dispensation. Mm -hmm. That one we all know. Okay. And you cannot create it using an act of parliament. Mm -hmm. That one we all know. That one we know. Be you a lawyer or not a lawyer, we all know that. Mm -hmm. The only way to create it is through amending the constitution. That one we all know. The only way to achieve that amendment is a referendum. We all know that. Mm -hmm. We are simply telling them, Stop being political psychophants mm -hmm. and just use the legal avenue provided in the constitution if you deem it mm -hmm. that these positions of CSS are important. Okay. And we will achieve mm -hmm. that which you desire. Okay. Talk to me about the number cap. The number, uh, the number actually, the initial bill capped the number at 22 mm -hmm. maximum, mm -hmm. uh, number of uh, uh, cars that should be perhaps recommended to the president by the Public Service Commission. But then that clause has also been deleted and now actually the, the, the president has uh, some sort of a free way to choose whatever number he deems right. We uh, were a little bit shocked back then when there were over 50 uh, mm -hmm. cars or other chief administrative secretaries who are recommended, who are actually not even recommended, but who are sworn in by the mm -hmm. president back then in state house. What do you think about the capping of the number and removing of the numbers even if people are to go to the referendum for that? So, so it tells you exactly what they're doing. They're mm -hmm. simply creating a platform mm -hmm. to reward political failures. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has got nothing to do with uh, service provision by the mm -hmm. people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Because if it were, it would have been, it would even have borrowed from the constitution mm -hmm. that set up a number cap. Mm -hmm. And Kenyans were very clear when they put up this cap. Mm -hmm. At the time of passing the constitution, we had over 40 ministers, 44 to be precise, mm -hmm. cabinet ministers. Kenyans say we don't want more than this number, 22. Okay. Mm -hmm. They have also decided it. Now you are creating this illegal mongrel mm -hmm. and you are even making it amorphous. Mm -hmm. 
So you can even appoint 300 people to become CSS, okay. to achieve political objectives. But who will meet the cost of sustaining them in office? Mm -hmm. The same people. You see the double speak. Mm -hmm. You are setting up a bloated government. On the one hand, you are claiming that you want people to live an austere lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And yet you are being ostentatious, creating offices that don't make meaning to the people of Kenya mm -hmm. and forcing them to sustain those people in office. It's a double speak. Mm -hmm. Parliament is a lost cause. Mm -hmm. Anybody who has faith in Parliament, I feel sorry for him. Mm -hmm. You can see. And it's clear to everybody. Mm -hmm. There's no thinking that goes on in that Parliament. Mm -hmm. They leave their brains at St. John, as I told you last time, mm -hmm. and walk into that house and they do their own things. Mm -hmm. There's a big disconnect between the people of Kenya mm. and that parliament. Wakili, we are here talking about politics, leadership, and governance. Mm. This is actually the core mandate mm. of this particular show. Mm. And here we are. As a president, how do you balance between politics and governance? How do you balance? Because when you talk of rewarding political cronies, actually that would be the political part of it. When politics and governance clash, how then do you balance this? Just go back to the constitution. Mm -hmm. Your mandate is as given in the constitution of Kenya. Mm -hmm. That should be your Bible. Okay. And use the constitution mm -hmm. to balance the politics and the governance. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. It's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. Just always are on the side of the rule of law. Mm -hmm. Everything else will fall in place. Being on the side of the rule of law here would mean that uh, they saw you people call political cronies actually mm -hmm. wouldn't be rewarded. And that but you'll be serving the people. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, mm -hmm. who carries an executive? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, who carries the executive? So you'll score on the governance side, but... On the politics side, if you are governing as well, uh -huh. the people will feel the impact of what you are doing. Okay. And the people will be with you. Mm -hmm. In fact, these politicians are trying to reward. Mm -hmm. Remember, 70% of people in parliament normally lose their seats anyway. Mm -hmm. They are normally rejected in general elections. Minimum 70% mm -hmm. are voted out. So why are you investing in failures? They are going anyway, even these ones. 70% mm -hmm. of them, in fact, will be more this time, almost 90, will be voted out the next election. Mm -hmm. So why are you wasting time with them? Focus on the people. Mm -hmm. If you ever want longevity, mm -hmm. it's about the people. It's not about the leaders. Okay. Make it the people's agenda. Hmm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. How does the president balance between politics and governance here? That is a big question that we have today. But of course, the reintroduction of uh, the positions of chief administrative secretary is, is here with us. We are waiting to see what will actually happen with uh, that bill uh, supposedly being taken to the president. He's not yet assented to it yet, but then we're waiting to see what will happen there. And he's also talked about austerity measures. We wonder whether this actually uh, amounts to double speak from him. But then you can weigh on this conversation. Tell us what you think about this particular happening here. And of course, do uh, make sure that you follow us for more. If you're watching us for the first time, kindly subscribe to this channel. Always keep it here at Candid Talk. And uh, do follow me across all social media platforms at Evans or Kini. Till we have this conversation again, have yourself a very lovely day. My name is Evans or Kini.